This is an overview of Clarity by Microsoft. It's a free tool that lets you see what your website visitors are doing. It comes with session recordings, heat maps, basic analytics, and quick insights. Clarity is still new to me, but I suspect going forward, I will be putting it on all websites. It's incredibly simple and easy to use, and there are no limits on the free version. I have a post on it over on my Simple Revolutions blog. It's relevant there as the blog is about how freelancers and small agencies can move from selling websites as commodities where we're often in competition with the DIY solutions we are using ourselves and have no control over to providing a more ongoing and timeless service that focuses on design and how users interact with it. It's a move to the science of psychology where the platform itself is nothing more than a vehicle or a tool in our businesses as web designers. If we're going for a more agile data-driven approach, the launch of a site is really the beginning. We'll need tools to help us know how to iteratively keep improving our client sites. And okay as small web design companies we are not going to be monitoring and experimenting like amazon google facebook bookings.com and now government sites but i think we can start to bring some of the successes of agile approaches to regular businesses and distinguish ourselves from literally everyone who can now deliver a website clarity i think is perfectly suited to helping the ux monitoring for regular businesses you might need more later but it covers the basics. I'm going to get off camera now and we'll take a look at Clarity. To get started, we'll need to go to clarity.microsoft.com. As you can see here, I'm logged into my account, but if I open up incognito mode, I can show you how easy it is to sign in or get signed up. And you're offered three options, which is to sign in with Microsoft, Facebook, or Google. And when you've done this, you just need to go to my projects and add a new project to add in your site. And you can call it whatever you like, add in the URL select a site category for it and then you'll be able to add your project and that's going to take you to a page where it gives you some instructions on how to add the javascript code to various different sites i just copy and paste it as i'm using wordpress in this case i'm using the beaver builder theme so in the customizer there under the code section i've got the head code and i can place the javascript where i place my google analytics code but there is also for wordpress users a very lightweight plugin i can tell that by the measurements that wp hive does it really really is lightweight but i don't need an extra plugin but it might be useful for some i should also mention that they do have a chrome extension extension for clarity and I've not really got into using it but as I put out some viable minimal websites out to see how they will run and then design as we go along this might be quite handy as I'm looking at them from the outside quite often and it's quite easy to use there you can get to your heat maps and you can look at different sections and you can access some of the session recordings from here so I don't know if I'll keep that because it's pretty easy to use clarity but I'm going to try it out for some time okay let's go over to my account and what I'm going to do is to look at one of my personal sites which is Beaver Junction it's a site that's made for Beaver Builder users they are the sponsor of this blog when you go into here, you go straight into the dashboard, but I'll come back to this. This is probably where I'll spend most of my time. And from here, you can filter anything that's on that dashboard here. I'm going to put this to seven days. I don't think this has been on for a full seven days, but it'll give us more information. And we'll come back to this. Let's go over to our settings first and what we see on the overview is just what we've put in so we could change that name for this if i want to do obviously not the url but we could change the category and we can delete the project from here we can also add in team members that's pretty straightforward add in their email address and assign them one of two roles the member where they see all of the information here but could change the settings or we can make them a co-admin and we could remove ourselves so hand over the account to them 
and makes it all pretty easy. And I've gone through this process and the client's been able to understand what they need to do. So, and it tells me as well when they've signed in. So it seems a pretty good system. In fact, everything about this seems well thought out. Okay, let's go to setup. And here we can integrate with Google Analytics. Now I've already done it on here, but what would happen otherwise is that you get the chance to sign into your Google account, go to analytics, and then select, hopefully from a drop down menu, one of your accounts you want to link with it, just click on it, and then you're done. Sometimes your site won't be there on the drop down menus, which I found, I think, in this case. And then you will need to add in a dimension by yourself. But there are pretty good instructions. I was able to follow it and do it. Let me just show you how this connects. So if I go over to my Google Analytics account here, so we can, you know, scroll down to the behavior that we see here and when we go and find this secondary dimension here clarity payback playback url it puts the url for the session recording for any of these visits so we can just grab this and see what actually was happening in real time for this information so i think that's quite useful and handy so probably worth doing let's go and look at advanced settings so all we've got here is cookies here now i should say that clarity is gdpr compliant so it's not gathering any personal data but you may feel that you need to still abide by the cookie law which is still in existence although due to change at some point now all I do in this case is I don't go and add in the script that you'll need to make sure that you get permission before this cookie is dropped. I just put the cookie in my privacy page. That's because in the UK, we have the ICO. They're only looking at the top 200 sites where they've got complaints and they don't consider something like Google Analytics to be intrusive. So it's very unlikely that I'll get a warning and I would get a warning first. So instead of having a pop-up for something that no one really cares about, I've just left it as that. But you might feel differently and need to do that or you might need to do it for your country. Um, let's just go here where it shows us where the tracking code is again in case we've lost it for some reason okay that's it let's go to masking it defaults to this balance where it doesn't record what someone is typing into any of our forms in fact this is the default on what i've been using and i noticed that it obscures some of the text which is public on the site as well so it obviously doesn't necessarily always get that balance right just little bits of it i've not put it on strict before uh, i'm guessing that will do the same with nearly all of your text and i probably would advise against relax it doesn't seem like a good one to have particularly because one of the benefits i think of this system is that you don't need your clients to be logged in to share one of the sessions you can simply make one of your recorded sessions public on a url a long complex url of course for a limited period of time so they could take a look at one of those recordings without an account and we've got ip blocking which you're probably going to need to do it makes it very easy for you to do it because it picks up on your current ip so you can do it give it a name there or add in somebody else's you might want to do that with your clients in fact one of the interesting things about the session recordings is that it will record what's going on in the back end so if someone's playing around with a page builder for the first time perhaps a client i could record record that and see how they're getting on with something and so i probably add clarity quite early before the site's going live okay let's uh, move on now we'll go back to the google analytics now one thing i didn't mention is that it takes a couple of hours from when you set this up for it to start recording the sessions or at least for them to start showing up what i've noticed is i signed in with google analytics at roughly the same time i set up the account and it's only i I think yesterday where some figures actually have appeared here linking back from Google Analytics to Clarity and it's not the same numbers so it was dead for a number of days so you might find that you get the same let's go over to heat maps so here we can look at our different pages that are being visited we can see how many people have visited in the seven days that we're looking at and we can view the map here and we can see who was on a PC and where they were clicking on a tablet, on a mobile. I'm just gonna go back to PC here and it shows our clicks. We can go for areas where we can see more on the kind of statistics, the percentages, and we can go for scroll, which should go from sort of red at the top where most people will see it, right to where they keep dropping off as they scroll down the page and it goes more to the blue, but we can see 
how many people or percentage of people have reached that. So all the stuff that you would expect here, all the filters and the segmentations that can be done on this, which I can't cover in this. Next is recordings, where again, we can filter by all of these. And this is where we can, with any of these, share these recordings with somebody. So we're just with the project team by default or with anyone here. And then we get a public URL, which we can expire after a certain number of days and just copy and paste that. And I shall show you that in a moment. I probably won't be in this very often because I'll probably go to my recordings from the dashboard here. So what we've got here above the basic analytics are some things particular to clarity and they're explained here. So we have dead links, it gives us a percentage of those, rage clicks, uh, excessive scrolling, Quick backs, which is when people have quickly gone back to the page. So presumably well, what they went to wasn't what they expected and they've zoomed back. And we got JavaScript errors over here as well. So with something like this, let's just take off this filtering that I've got here. You can see mine is quite high for dead clicks. Now I'd expect this to be the case, but what's really nice about this, we can click on this and then just, if we go to this to 100%, and we go over there, we can go to the recordings and take a look at those. And what I found in my case is that the dead clicks were things that we would expect, things like a scroll to top button, which isn't really a link, or a mobile menu, which is just the icon button, that's going to be one. But in this case, it's high because it's a site which has lots of code snippets and people are just clicking to select those code snippets. So that's there. The rage clicks I've not seen come up for me. Excessive scrolling, we'd expect that might be possibly an indication that content hasn't been sectioned in a way that people can find it very easily. Um, let's take a look at the other things that you get here. One thing about the JavaScript errors when they show up is that I think what could be creating these are third parties. I think Google Maps, if that's embedded, will do that. Also, we have to remember if someone's gone in the back end of your site in the page builder, it's probably likely to be they're showing some JavaScript errors with that. So that might account for some of those. The rest of the stuff is the stuff you would expect for visitor analytics, uh, operating systems, the countries, the browsers they come from, devices that they've been used. I've got this on a subset again, haven't I? So let's just uh, And we've got the where they're being referred from and the popular pages. And I've set this up for one e-commerce site and it will also give you then the popular products as well as the popular pages. And I think that probably would cover a lot of people so they wouldn't need to use something like Google Analytics. They could just use this. I think that's all I really need to show you here. I'll just finish off by showing you the recording that I made public. So this is what someone will see. This is the mobile view of a site which has just gone live, which is still being worked on. And, you know, this is quite nice. We can look at it by the different pages that they go and we can move along our timeline to a certain section. We've got the, if you've used a tool like this before, you might be used to the fact that you can speed it up and skip over inactivity and just look at, at different sections. And one thing that I did find quite interesting on this one, see it took 18 seconds for this to load on the mobile. Now I'm surprised by this because this is something which I got 100% on Google PageSpeed Insights. But in reality, some people are taking some time to load. Now, of course, that could be clarity and some of these pages load a lot quicker, I think two seconds on four seconds on this so it changes but you know it's a bit of extra information that i didn't expect anyway i think it's really cool you could lose all of your day just watching these recordings seeing how people behave on your sites i hope this was useful i think that's all i can say on clarity and i hope i see you again in another video soon thank you bye bye